Hello, welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we completed writing the function rock underscore paper underscore scissor and that receives two parameters, the values for player one and player two. And we wrote the comparisons between the player one and player two in order to find out who wins the game or whether the game is draw or not. And I explained why I took all these macros there because we can write the rock as rock, paper as paper, and scissor as scissor. Also, we can use uh, player one win if the player one indeed wins the game. Or we can use this player two underscore win if player two wins the game. And there is another one, this draw. If the game is draw, we can write draw there in our program. As you can see that happening here, we are assigning draw to the result. Now, when the program gets compiled by the compiler, compiler is going to replace all these occurrences of rock, paper, and scissor with one, two, and three uh, prior compiling this program. In this way, our program becomes more readable as we can write rock as rock, paper as paper, and scissor as scissor. So any one else other than the programmer, if they go on reading this program, they will be able to understand the program clearly. And of course, for the students, it's going to be more easier for them to understand the logic. So that's the rock, paper, scissor function that we are going to use in our actual game. And I also have written this function, uh, get underscore user underscore input. I have not explained that earlier. Let me explain this function. It's a simple function that's going to take the user's input whether they would like to input rock or paper or scissor. And it's going to return the value to the caller. And we are going to use this in our program. You can see that uh, this function is going to print this menu there on the screen. And it is going to ask the user to input between one or two or three. And the input is taken there in this variable choice. And then if the user gives anything other than one, two or three, it's going to print error message there and we put all these things inside that do while loop so if user gives anything other than one two or three then after printing this error message this condition is going to become true if the user gives anything other than one two and three this is going to become true so it's going to iterate back and again it's going to print the menu so it's going to ask the user repetitively until it gets a valid input and then finally we are going to return that to the caller at the end. So here, I am returning that choice to the caller using that return statement. So that's the function get underscore user underscore input and that we can use in order to get the user's input. Now, in the main function, you can see that I have declared those two integer variables, user underscore score, and that is to keep the user's score and computer underscore score in order to keep the computer's score. When the user wins, we are going to increment that user underscore score by one. And when computer wins, we are going to increment that computer underscore score by one. So let's go ahead and write the game loop now. So the game is going to continue as long as the user wants to continue. If they want to go to the next round, it's going to continue to the next round. Otherwise, if they want to terminate, it's going to terminate. So we are going to put everything there within a while loop. Let me declare a variable there, int quit, and let me initialize that with zero. And here is the while loop, as long as not quit. Inside of this while loop, we are going to put everything there. So at the end of that while loop, we are going to ask the user if they would like to continue to the next round. So if you want to continue, input any integer zero to terminate. So if user inputs zero here, then they would like to terminate the game. So let me declare a variable response and let me take the user's response there in this variable response. And here, if response is zero, that means they want to terminate the game. So in that case, we are going to assign one to quit. And then you see that this is the end of the while, end of while, and it's going to iterate back there. And since quit is one so this condition will become false and we are going to come out of the while loop so that's how the while loop is going to terminate now here inside of the while loop what we are going to do first is we are going to take the user's input that means what user wants to give for this round rock or paper or scissor so integer user input 
and we have written a function there in order to get the user input. I'm making a call to that. If you can remember, this is the function. I explained this, right? And we are getting that here in the user underscore input variable. Now this is time to get the computer's choice and we are going to generate a random integer for this purpose. So here we go, integer computer choice and we are going to make a call to the random function mod 3. Now before we could make a call to the random function, we need to randomize the seed by making a call to that srand and we need to pass that time of system, the current time of system so that on each call the rand function is going to generate different random numbers. Otherwise it's going to be the same series of random numbers and I have actually discussed everything about random number uh, in a previous tutorial. So if you are not confident how that rand function works, please, please, please find that tutorial there in the curriculum and go through that. So in order to use that srand and rand, we need to include that stdlib.h and for the time we need to include this time.h. So I actually did that. So the computer choice is taken. Now one more thing that I must mention here. Now if you are doing percent three there, it's actually going to generate zero or one or two. Now for rock, we have a defined value one. For paper, we have a defined value two. And for scissor, it's three. So it must choose between one, two or three, but it is actually getting zero or one or two. So what we need to do here is to add one. Mod three, if you're doing mod three, it's going to be zero, one or two, either zero or one or two. So we are adding one in order to get one or two or three. Now that we have got the choices of both the users and computer, we can just go ahead and call that function, rock, paper, scissor, in order to get who wins the game or whether it is a draw or not. So we are going to pass that user input here and the computer choice here in place of player two while making a call to this rock underscore paper underscore scissor. But prior to that, let's just print into the console what each of these players has chosen. So computer chose. Now here, instead of one, two or three, we just need to print rock, paper and scissor, either rock or paper or scissor. So I need to write another function there. And let's name it print word. And let's receive an integer value v. So if v is say rock, we need to print rock. So that user understands better there. Otherwise, if v is paper, it needs to print paper. Else if b is scissor, we need to print scissor. That's going to look nice. So here, computer chose and we are making a call to that print word and we are passing computer choice. So if the computer choice is one, it's going to print rock. If the computer choice is, choice is two, it's going to print paper. Otherwise for three, it's going to print scissor. Now user chose. Again, we are going to make a call to that print underscore word and we need to pass that user input there. So we are just clearly printing what each of these players have taken there, either of rock, paper or scissor. Now it's time to find the winner or the result of the game. So here we go, integer result. And we are making a call to that rock, paper, scissor. And we need to pass the values for both of these users, I mean these players. So the first parameter is for player one and the second one is for the computer, that's player two computer underscore choice. So we are going to get the result there in this variable result. And if result equals equals draw, then we're going to print it is a draw. Otherwise, if else if result equals equals player one underscore win. Now you can notice that how convenient it is when we are writing this player one underscore win instead of one or two or three. Okay, so it's much more convenient while we write programs. So if you have this kind of situations, you need to actually coin something like that, a word which is having some integer values, then always define that word with hash define. So in this case, player one wins, that means user wins. 
and computer lost the game. So what we need to do here is to increment that, I'm sorry, that user score by one. Else if result equals equals player two wins and player two is computer. Okay, so printf computer wins and user lost the round. Okay, it should be rounded. It's not the game. So let me change that to round. Great. Now here, we need to actually increase the computer score by one. And we are doing that there. And we are done. And when this is done, we are asking the user whether they would like to continue to the next round or not. And if they wants to continue to the next round, it's going to iterate back and do the same thing again. So if they wants to quit, then quit will be one when the response is zero. And we are going to come out of that while loop. So here, we are going to print the final score. Now, after each of the round, we also need to print the scores there so that it's convenient for the user to get what is the current score. So user score, we are printing the score after each of the round there, user underscore, user underscore score, and then printf computer score, computer underscore score. Let me make it a little bit nicer. And then we need to print that final score there. So we are going to do the same thing what we were actually doing after each of the rounds. So here we are going to print the final score of the game. And if user score equals equals computer score, then we are going to print that game was draw. Else if user score is greater than computer score, then we are going to print user wins the game. Otherwise, computer wins the game. And we are done. I hope everything is all right in this program and we are not going to get any syntax error. So let's go ahead and try to build this. Okay, it's fine. It's working fine there. So let me do the input for the user. So I'm actually putting one there. So you can see that one means computer chose paper, user chose rock. So one is rock and uh, it should be actually rock. It's not rocks. Okay, so let me just correct that quickly and it should be rock here. Okay, that's done. Now, if we want to continue there, I just need to uh, input one there and it's uh, iterating back in the while loop. And this time I'm going to print, I'm going to input two. So you can see that it's computer actually chose Caesar and user chose, chose paper. So computer wins and user lost the round. So it's two for computer and zero for user. Let me go ahead again. So let me choose three, Caesar. And you can see that this time user wins because I chose Caesar there and computer chose paper. So Caesar wins because Caesar cuts the paper. So for user it's one and for computer it's two. Now if I want to terminate this, I can just put zero there and it's going to terminate. So here's the final result computer wins the game because computer score is two and the user score is one. So that's all. I hope you have enjoyed developing this rock, paper, scissor. I want you to just type this by yourself and see how it works. Thank you for watching.